All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown. All three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Now, today I'm going to be reviewing Stephen Lawhead, and the title of the book, I believe, is Taliesin. You can see how it's spelled there. You guys... You guys probably know more about this than I do. This is book number one in his um, Pendragon Cycle. And book number two is, of course, Merlin, we've got here. Book number three is Arthur. Book number four is Pendragon. And book number five is Grail. And I have read, I read these books. I first started buying these books and read them all back when I was in college. So it's been a while since I've read these. I do remember liking... Should I should face the camera as I'm talking. I do remember liking these books quite a bit back when I read them. I thought I would reread them. I was on a bit of a King Arthur trip this last week. In fact, I reviewed yesterday Mary Stewart's The Crystal Cave, and then I was still hungering for some King Arthur stuff, so I thought I would do book number one in Stephen Lawhead's King Arthur series, and uh, oddly enough, I uh, when I was reviewing this one yesterday, I had my this same shirt on. I don't know how that happened, because today I'm reviewing this one, got the same shirt on. It's either, it's either I like to wear the same shirt a couple days in a row, or I'm filming both of these reviews back to back on the same day. I don't know. You figure it out. So, if you want to see my review of The Crystal Cave, just type in my last name, Durfee. The Crystal Cave, into your YouTube search bar, and you can watch the review of this. But for now, let's concentrate on the Stephen R. Lawhead book. So let's start with the covers, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. This book has a good little uh, kind of icon, a little harp here with some scroll work, a little Celtic scroll work or something going on. Um, wraps around you got the harp on the back this is nice it's got the the illustration was done by eric, eric peterson and it looks like he kind of did um you know the illustrations for all of them and they all have the same sort of thing and and by god when you put the spines together they all match it's it's absolutely magical when publishers do that for us and they make it so the entire series looks good on the shelf and you know that always pleases me. Anyway, so which one were we reviewing? Not Arthur, not Merlin, not Pendragon, and not Grail. We were reviewing Taliesin, book number one. Uh, cover, there's a map in here too. There is a nicely drawn map of England. And, you know, this book actually is about the lost island of Atlantis, but I don't see it on the map anywhere. Well, that's probably because it's lost. So, this is an epic tale of the twilight of Atlantis and the dawning of the Arthurian era. And as I mentioned in my book, The Crystal Cave, which this book was, it's a, it's a saga of King Arthur, but it starts with young Merlin the Magician as a six-year-old boy. A lot of the people that write these big sagas about King Arthur, they start pre-King Arthur's birth. They always give us a couple of novels with the build-up to how Arthur became Arthur. This one starts with before even Merlin's birth. This one starts with Merlin's parents who were living and dealing with and integrated into this island of Atlantis, which goes missing. Um, we start with... Cheris, who ends up, who eventually becomes the mother of King Arthur. Cheris is a young girl, an Atlantean princess. I think how, I don't know how you say. If people are from Atlantis, I'm just assuming they're at Atlanteans. Is that the way? If you're from Atlanta, Georgia, are you Atlanteans? Because if you're from Atlantis, you'd be Atlanteans. I don't have any clue. Cheris is the young princess of Atlantis, let's just say that. She's uh, caring, naive. Um, she um, goes on to she goes on to kind of become a, a, a 
a dancer in the bull ring and she's inspired to do this because she as a youngster she was watching you know these dancers in the bull rings and one of the dancers is uh, critically injured and she's very concerned about the dancer and this is part of the opening of the book and they go to visit the dancer that's been injured and I won't tell you how that plot line plays out but it was actually the plot line that really thrust me into being really interested in this book and Cherish's journey. Um, uh, there's um, another character named Elfin, uh, E-L-P-H-I-N, Elfin. He's kind of like this bumbling Irishman, although they're not called Irishmen in this book, they're Celts. And he goes from a bumbling Irishman to kind of a respected warlord over time. Um, and then we also have um, Taliesin, the main character, which uh, you, the, one of the main characters, Taliesin, who um, is in love with Cheris, or the uh, the Atlantisian princess, Atlantis, yeah, the Atlantisian princess, and uh, despite despite Cheris's father's like absolute objection to this relationship. Taliesin presses forward. Um, Cherish's father, Avalok, not, wants nothing to do with it. Um, the character Elfin that I talked about, um, he's also, there's kind of like a few love triangle love stories going on throughout this book. Elfin, he's kind of got his own um, thing, but um, Elfin, he finds, the reason he's important to the book is because he's the one that finds Taliesin as a baby in, stuck in some fishnets. Much like, you know, the Christian allegory where, um, you know, with Moses, you know, where Moses was found and, and raised to be a prince. And, and, uh, and, you know, this has got, this book has got a lot of Christian allegory in it. Um, you know, it, it, like I said, it's got the Moses allegories. It's got the Christ-like thing going on with Arthur and later books, if I remember correctly. Um, it's got um, the Holy Grail. It's got a lot of Jesus-themed things. Um which is cool. I, I have no problem with any of this. Um, it's a very Christian-centered kind of a uh, world here where, um, you know, they worship Jesus. And um, this book is about Merlin's parents and how the city of Atlantis was fallen and how um, Merlin's parents got together. And um, it is at the, towards the end, of course, there's the birth of Merlin. And um, I'm, not, I'm not giving spoilers away here. When we're talking about King Arthur books, and we're talking about characters like Merlin and Arthur and Uther and everybody that's going to be, we kind of already know the direction this stuff is going to go. If we're going to have a book about King Arthur's parents or and, and Merlin's parents, know that, by God, they're, they, Merlin is going to get born at the end of the book. That's the way it's... That's the plot spoiler right there twist ending merlin gets born we knew that's what it was leading up to we knew however the journey was pretty cool this book has a lot of action and adventure in it quite a bit more than i remembered from my first reading way back in college in fact this has got a lot of sort of like mystical magical writing i mean stephen r lawhead's writing is just absolutely um flawless in a lot of ways reminds me a lot of what bernard cornwell did now bernard cornwell with his um arthur Therian saga is very grim very realistic very um just dirt medieval dirtiness and um hard rated r scenes there's not any of that in um this book this is very pg rated um this is very kind of like hopeful very um heroic um good guys are good bad guys are not that bad um but still fun still fun now as i was reading these two series the opening books of these two series together as you saw in my review of crystal cave yesterday or today or five minutes ago you um i gave this one um slightly higher rating than this one and um but that's not to say that this book isn't super dynamite. And I can't wait to get to the book called Merlin, where we learn about Merlin as a youngster. And then, of course, it goes to Arthur and so on. This book, Taliesin, by Stephen R. Lawhead, gets a solid, solid 
8 out of 10 stars.